nasty. That's nasty as fuck. What's up, guys? Welcome to the third episode of Prolifically Curious. Hmm. Welcome back. Uh, uh. If you're new to this channel, new to this series, what I do is I beat my face, honey. Yes. Mm -hmm. Slay it to the gods. Slay it to the motherfucking gods, bitch. And then while I'm beating my face, I tell a true crime story. Today, I'm going to do my true crime story on Barbara Daly Bakeland. And I chose her because she was a wealthy socialite and that's going to be me one day. Honey, I still got time. She still has time. Yeah, she does. Okay, without further ado, let's get mm, 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 into it. Barbara was born Barbara Daly. Now, she was born in 1922. She was the only child. Her parents were married. Her mother and father, the relationship was not the best. And Barbara was an only child. The relationship wasn't the best and he was very unhappy. And maybe he was just very unhappy in life, not just like with the relationship. So in 1933, he commits suicide. What he does is he turns his car on. Oh. Let me not detail how to commit suicide. Okay, so Robert's father commits suicide and he does it by carbon monoxide poisoning. And just like if you are feeling like your life doesn't matter and that no one will miss you, your life does matter. People will miss you and you should really get some help if you're feeling like you want to commit suicide. So here's the suicide hotline. Like, God, you know, like they thought that they had a insurance plan. So Barbara and her mom waited for the insurance money to come and when it came in, they were off. They left Boston, which was where they were living at the time, and they moved to New York City. In New York, they actually lived at the Del Montico Hotel. During their time in New York City, Barbara becomes a socialite. Barbara is that bitch. And what is a social life? Back in that, back in the day, like that long time ago, because <laughs> I wasn't alive, she's a socialite. Like, uh, she would be considered like Kim Kardashian. How everyone knows who she is. Some people love her, some people hate her, but you gotta admit, she's beautiful, she's popular, she's that bitch, right? Oh, this is gonna be so mean. But like Kim Kardashian, like Barbara really didn't have um, a bunch of skills other than that. She was beautiful. Like she was beautiful. She was named one of New York's most beautiful people, top 10 beautiful girls. And addition on top of that, Barbara was featured in Vogue magazine. She would be at all the restaurant. That is not a word. Restaurant. Mm -mm. Okay. You know what? Don't tell nobody about that. She would be at all the fancy restaurants that were like super difficult to get into. What is going on with me today? I promise y'all like in real life, like when I'm not telling the story, my English just is really this bad for real. <laughs> I'm just being honest. So she would be at all of the fancy restaurants. Honey, she would be living it up. All the men wanted to date her. All the women want to be her. Barbara was really like in real life she was that bitch she was super popular so Barbara did what many hopefuls who want to be like super successful and really take their um popularity their name to the next level she goes to California baby that's where I am snaps Barbara so Barbara goes out to California and she tries to act well acting requires you know some skill so Barbara really wasn't super successful at being an actor but while she's trying to act she meets Cornelius Bakeland now Barbara's a cute girl beautiful super beautiful girl so of course even all the rich people want to be around her and she wants to be around them 
Did I ruin, like, kind of tell you something I was supposed to tell you? Yes, I did. Our Cornelia family was rich. And I know you're thinking, how rich? What's rich? No, wealthy, honey. Not rich. Wealthy. There's a difference. Rich, we all know, can be ruined with the drug habit. Wealthy, <laughs> honey, you can buy all the drugs and make some more. So, the family was wealthy. How wealthy were they? Who were they? You know plastics? You know, like, plastic, plastic material? Not material. You know, like, plastics? Plastics material? Like, the actual plastic? Like, the plastic jugs, plastic milk bottles? Well, her family didn't invent the plastic milk bottle or the plastic jug. They invented plastic. You hear me? Plastic. All plastic started with the family. That's how wealthy they were. Like, this is stupid. They'll be rich for the rest of their lives. I mean, damn. That's like inventing water. Only we need plastics. Did I say we didn't need water? I don't know. Whatever. Keep the story going. So then, Barbara finds out, oh my god. She is rich, honey. She's like rich, rich. She's like rich, bitch, rich. Like rich, rich. And so, as the story goes, Cornelia says, Oh, you're a cute girl. Everybody wants their family to date someone cute. So, Cornelia sets her brother up with Barbara. Now, Barbara did her research, research on Cornelia. But, Cornelia did not do any research on Barbara. Because if she had, she would have known that Barbara was a little cray cray. Barbara has, was seeing a psychiatrist. She had mental health issues. Her mom had mental health issues. So mental health issues ran in the family. But all Cornelia saw was a cute face. So that didn't matter. Well, she didn't know. She didn't even try to investigate it. So she was like, hey, bro, I got this cute friend. What's up? Do you want to be, do you want to meet her? Do you want to go out with her? Brother saw Barbara it was like, yeah, bitch, of course. Like, she's super cute. So Barbara and the brother, Brooks. So Barbara's dating Brooks, B&B. &B. Um, I don't know if they made a t-shirt that said BBB. Barbara, Brooks, Faking Land. They would have one of those names like Brangelina. Brook, Brook Bar? Brook Bar. I don't know. In the comments, tell me if you come up with a better name. I come up with Brook Bar. I'm going to call them Brook Bar. Yeah. So Barbara is dating Brooks, but their relationship is not the best relationship. Like, it's not a good relationship because she wasn't really attracted to him. She only really was dating him for his money. Sound familiar? And, I mean, let me talk about this dating guys for their money. I salute you, bitch. Like, I salute you. So, she's dating Brooks for his money. That's what she's doing. She says I'm about that life. So, their relationship wasn't that good. And he tried to break it off several times. And Barbara's like, no, honey, we not doing that. Like, you think I'm going to let this plastic money go? No, boo. No, mm -mm. so then Barbara, when Brooks finally like has enough, I'm sure he, he tried to break up with her more than once, but never successful. And when it finally seemed like, okay, this time it's going to stick. I'm breaking up with Barbara. Barbara went home, laid on the bed, thought about it. I'm pregnant. <laughs> and the gag is, she wasn't. So back then in the 40s, around that time period, you know, you could not be pregnant without a husband. That's like a no-no. It's just, that's something you don't do. So Brooks then decides, I'll make a, a honorable woman out of you and I'll marry you. So they get married and later on, Barbara reveals, <laughs> gotcha bitch, gotcha bitch. I am not pregnant. So her husband was very upset about this. So he begins a string of affairs that basically never ended throughout their marriage. 
segue into more stories about his affairs. But the affairs never ended. So he just constantly like, like hoeing around like, oh, like y'all married, like calm the fuck down. And then Barbara sees him having affairs. So Barbara has some affairs too. During this time, Barbara gets pregnant. Finally, for real, like for real, for real. The first time was like for play play. In 1946, she had a baby named Anthony Bakeland. Now, and she named her baby Anthony like Mark Anthony. And I just like felt like Barbara did have a little bit of sauce because that name is amazing. Like she chose a name that was memorable, a name that was different, a name that was creative, like H where you were, get out of here. Barbara and Brooks had a tumultuous relationship. So Barbara and Brooks are off living their best life. They're moving around the U.S. You know, before the coronavirus was like, like, eh, y'all bitches can't go nowhere. Y'all try to stay at home. So they're going, living all over the U.S. Then they decide to move into Gay Paris in 1960. So they're off in Paris and. Brooks is being Brooks and he's having affairs. Then he meets an English diplomat's daughter. Honey, she was 15. Like, ooh. You know, like 15? Mm. So he tells, Brooks tells Barbara, I want a divorce. Okay? Divorce. He is done with Barbara. He's done with her antics. And he just fell in love with this, this English girl. No, no. Barbara said, no, sir. We're not, we're not doing that. We're not doing that today. And we're not doing that tomorrow. So Barbara decides that she cannot take the fact that Brooks wants to leave her. And she tries to commit suicide. And I imagine, like, you know, like her dad, she already has mental health issues. And she decides to commit suicide. But it was believed that she really wasn't serious about her suicide because she didn't die. And also that made Brooks decide that, you know what, I'm sorry English girl, I know I said I love you and I was going to marry you, but I want to be with my wife. Which is why you don't engage in relationship with married men, but you know, that's a whole nother story. So now their relationship is still rocky. Brooks decides he's going to stay with his wife, but their relationship is rocky nonetheless because it was rocky before then. Their son is like not really being cared for. They're cared for in the way that quite a few rich people care for their kids, which is the nannies do the caring and they like go off and they live their life while the nanny does all the work. So now Anthony ends up having mental health issues. It was said that he was psychotic and he really needed to see a psychiatrist to have um, help. He was psychotic and he was uh, being depressed and he really didn't need to see a psychiatrist to have help with his issues. But back then, they didn't believe in that. In the 60s, they didn't believe in doing that. So his mental health issues went untreated because of these horrible superstitions and these horrible beliefs about like, you know, mental health issues don't exist, which we know that they do. And there's nothing wrong with going to get help if you feel sad or um, you're just not feeling like you're living your best life. You need to go get help so that you can figure out what you need to do to be happy in life. Cause you only get one life, honey, and you should not live it being sad cause there are no redos, no playbacks, no take backs, no go backs, you know? So fast forward, to 1967, Anthony, love that name by the way, Anthony is now 20 years old. So at 20 years old, Anthony decides that he's going to go off to Spain. He meets this bisexual Australian named Jake Cooper. Love that name, like dude, they have some amazing names, memorable names back then. So Jake Cooper says, <laughs> let's go get some drugs. So Anthony and Jake Cooper, have this oh, just this wonderful romance they're doing drugs they're having the time of their lives so barbara's friend also named barbara i guess maybe that was a popular name like like back then because right now nobody is named barbara well no young people anyways so barbara's friend barbara she sees 
Barbara's son, the mom. She sees them off having an affair and is like, oh my God, girl, your son is gay. You need to do something about that. Barbara gets in the car, says, no, ma'am, not today. So she drives to go get her same from Switzerland to Spain. I believe you can do it. I'm not 100% sure, you know. So she drives and go gets her son. They come back, and on the way back, her son didn't have a passport. But Barbara, being the person that she is, she was like, no, baby, my baby's going through. We, we need to go home. They were then arrested. Some kind of way they got out of jail. I'm suspecting because they were like guap up. They had a guap, guap, guap of money that it wasn't nothing to get out of jail. But this wouldn't be someone's only time in jail. So then Barbara gets her son, her son home and says, we're not doing this. So she tries to rehabilitate him from being gay, which is stupid. She acquired prostitutes. Nasty. That's nasty. Okay, she got prostitutes for him, and then the prostitutes weren't working. So she had a friend. Her friend said, hey, my daughter, she's 20. She's single. Let her come stay with you. A hot young 20-year-old goes to stay with Barbara and her cheating husband. That's a little salt, a little sugar, a little letting you know something's about something. Something is about to go down. So enters this beautiful, beautiful young girl, young Spanish girl that's 20 years old named Sylvie. Now, Barbara, I don't know what kind of crazy relationship this is, but Barbara said, you know, she's bringing Sylvie to the house for her son. But daddy, daddy likes. So Brooks starts to have an affair with Sylvie and which makes sense because you know Brooks is a hoe she's 20 not saying that all 20 year olds are a hoe but you know it's suspect so come on going on up there so Brooks and Sylvie start to have an affair. And of course, Sylvie and Anthony are not having anything, having sex because he's gay. Like, that was stupid. Why would you do that? But she brought that 20 year old into her house and so they have an affair and guess what? <laughs> Brooks wants a divorce again. This time he is successful in getting the divorce. He leaves, he leaves the house, leaves the family house, leaves off with Sylvie. He leaves Anthony home with his mom that has been trying to get her prostitutes. Now, I mean, get him prostitutes. Now, as I told you in the story, the mom is also having affairs. So I guess she decides that, um, you know what? I, I know how to like pleasure a man and I had many lovers and they all want to be with me. Only reason I couldn't be with them is because I was married. They was like, yes, bitch, will you marry me? And I was like, no, motherfucker, I'm already married. So they decided, well, she, so she decided that, you know, she's got that fire. She's got the fire down there. So she feels that her vagina, it's not called a vagina, it's called a vagina. But she feels that her vagina is that good, honey. Like, again, she's that bitch. She's a socialite. She came literally from nothing into something. She bagged a, I don't even know, like, what they are, but they're, the money is long. You know, she bagged a husband that got that loan money. So, of course, it's, like, delicious. It's, it's, it's everything. It's everything okay so her vagina is everything so she decides that she's going to have sex with her son to get him to be straight as if the prostitutes having sex with him wasn't enough she, 1968 she rapes her son like that's so fucking nasty and she continues a sexual relationship with her son 
at one time he was having a male friend over because he's gay so he's with him and his boyfriend are doing whatever hanging out barbara in fact says you know what i can turn both of y'all because i'm that bitch and it's that good and she has sex with her son and his friend she had a threesome with them fucking grody right all right so this is cute right yes i know Fast forward past the sexual event that she had with her son and his friend, like, grody much? In 1972, they were in Chelsea, London. It was her, her son, and her, um, her friend, Susan, out for a night on the town. I don't know what she said to him, but he tries to throw her into traffic. And if it had not been for him not being strong enough, like he's not like Chris Helmsworth strong. He's like Daniel Radcliffe strong. Ooh, ooh. Well, it's facts. So he wasn't strong enough to throw her into traffic. So they go home that night there were no more like altercations. The police wanted to arrest him, but she didn't want to press charges on her son, which is normal. Like that's completely normal. Now in October, th on October 30th of that year, 1972, he is in a mental health facility because he didn't go to jail, but they did like get him some psychiatric counseling, which he needed. And the doctor said, Barbara, you better be careful. Your son is capable of murder and Barbara just dismisses it like no not my boo not my baby and a lot of us would dismiss that but then he already tried to kill her it's not like he's he already tried to do it like he already tried to do it so he gets released from the hospital and goes home to his mother and what do you think happened on November 17th, 1972, he stabs her. He stabs her to death. He stabs her once. It's the final stab that he really needs to do, but for good measure, he stabs her again. And he kills his mother, and the police arrive. I don't know who called the police. It's not said that who called the police. I suspect that he did, because how else would they know to come? The police arrive. He later confesses to the crime. He is arrested, charged with a crime, and then he tells what happened, what was happening to him, that he was a gay male, that his mom was um, having sex with him, and he just was really abused, and he wanted to get away from the abuse, and he did try to leave, and the only thing that he can think of to do to not be molested, to not, uh, to not have to deal with his mother is to murder her so they sent him to a psychiatric hospital and he got five years they obviously felt as if he was justified which is why he only got five years because they say okay you were protecting yourself so he ends up getting released after those five years and he was on probation and he goes to live with his, his grandmother. His father did not want anything to do with him at this time. His father had a new wife, not not Sylvie, the Spanish girl. He had a baby with Sylvie and went on to marry somebody else. So his father didn't want anything to do with him. So he moves in with his 87 year old grandmother. He stays with his grandmother after getting out of prison for murdering his mother, he gets into an argument with his grandmother and stabs her. He stabs her numerous times. He does so much damage that he actually broke several of her bones. He's arrested, of course, and he's sent to Rikers Island and he serves eight months. And the judge, for some reason, decides that he's going to release him. Only way he will release him, though, is he needs his medical records from the UK. So the medical records didn't arrive. They were supposed to arrive at a certain date. They didn't arrive at that date. So the judge said, look, I can't release you unless I have your medical records. His hearing, um, 
His hearing was on March 20th in 1981, and the judge decided that we're going to adjourn, adjourn this here. Uh, you know what the word, adjourn, 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 a journey. The hearing was going to be delayed. Let's use that word because I can say that. They decided they were going to adjourn the hearing and they were going to come back after the medical worker. Lord, it's late. It's late. Just excuses. God, I'm so embarrassed. Okay. This was March 20th, 1981. So about 3.30, he is sent back to his cell. Someone decides to go check on him. He is found in the cell, suffocated, dead, with the very thing that his family had created, plastic. He had suffocated himself with a plastic bag. What did you think of this story? What stories do you want me to do next? Leave some leave a comment down below of the story that you want me to do next. It has been your girl Logan the Empress. If you enjoyed this episode of Prolifically Curious, make sure that you subscribe to my channel and hit the bell for the next time that I do another story. Subscribe to stay up to date on Prolifically Curious. It has been your girl Logan the Empress and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.